Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. My name is Muhammad Haris bin Nur Azlin and I am an account executive in Hub Seng Berhad. I have a bachelor in accounting at University Technology Mara and I'm very pleased uh, to utilize my knowledge in this company group. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Azri bin Nur Hakimi and I am working as a junior accountant executive under Hub Seng Berhad and I have past experience working under many accounting firms and today I am delightful to share my knowledge towards this reporting segments and interim reporting. Assalamualaikum everyone, my name is Muhammad Shadi Akim bin Masho. I am newly appointed as Account Executive at Hub Seng Berhad. Previously, I worked as Accountant at Sam W. Berhad. My name is Putri Nabila Bindi Swami. I am also the new Accounts Executive of Hub Seng Consolidated Berhad. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Shazalina Mitimili as an account executive of Hapsang Company. Today, our group of account executives will present to you about our interim reporting and operating segment company. So, for the uh, segmental reporting, I would like to present to you the company background. Hapsang Berhad is the public company listed on the main market of Bursa Malaysia Securities Berhad. The group was incorporated since 1976 and the vision of this company is to create the value together to, and to be a better future. The mission of this company is to achieve sustainable growth and return for our shareholders over the long term. The next general overview of this company is HSBC is a diverse group with the six core businesses namely plantation, property, investment and development, credit financing, automotive, trading, and also building material. Next, I will explain about the factors to consider having a segment reporting. The nature of the product and services is crucial in determining segment reporting. For Hapsin Consolidated Berhad, its business division include plantation, property investment and development, credit financing, automotive, trading, and building materials. There are also several factors that need to be considered, which are the nature of the production processes, the class of customer for their products and services, and the methods used in providing their services. Now, there are six types of segment in the company, which are first, plantation. It's the cultivation of oil palm and processing of fresh fruit branches. Second, property, investment, and development. Third, credit financing, where it's the provision of financial services. Next is the automotive, which is trading in motor vehicle, spare parts, and servicing of motor vehicles. And then trading and distribution of fertilizer, agrochemical, general building materials, and petroleum products. Lastly is building materials, which is the operation of stone quarries and asphalt plants, manufacture of bricks. Let's proceed to Chief Operating Decision Maker which is also known as CODM. CODM refers to a function rather than a specific title for a manager. This function is responsible for allocating resources to operating segments and evaluating their performance. They are the one who make strategic decisions about the entity's segments. The CODM of HSCB is basically their senior management and board of directors. Herat Ubahrin is the Group Chief Operating Officer and also the Chief Executive of Automated Division. Aoyong Supa as Chief Executive of Plantation Division. Puan Chek Chek as a Chief Executive of Credit Financial Division. Wun Tau Wu, Chief Executive of Trading Division. Kur So Bang, Chief Operating Officer of Property Investment and Development Division. Yong Tak Jen, Chief Operating Officer of Building Materials and Andrew Telling, Chief Operator Officer of Quarry Asphalt and Brick Business. I believe that every position had their own responsibility. As for Chief Operating Decision Maker, they are responsible to create strategic plan. Next is to set the resolution. This is to ensure that there is an appropriate risk management framework to identify manage, evaluate, analyze, and monitor. Then, it is also 
the CODM responsibility to understand principal risk. The CODM also need to supervise and assess the management performance to determine whether the operating segments are being properly managed. They also have to discuss about operating activities, financial results, forecasts or plans for that segment. Lastly, examines both set of components operating performance and financial data is available for both. Hapsang Berhad is using revenue basis in measuring its operating segment for their company. We can identify the basis by using the 10% threshold test in which there are three types of 10% threshold tests, which are first, revenue basis, second is the profit or loss basis, and third is the asset basis. Furthermore, other than that, we can further measure the their segment by using the 75% threshold test, in which at least 75% of their total revenue should be accounted by the combined external revenues in operating segment. Next, I'm going to explain to you about the three types of the 10% threshold test. First is the revenue basis. The revenue basis is uh, reported revenues from sales to external customer plus with their intersegment sales. It should be 10% or more of the combined revenues. Next is the profit or loss. Profit or loss is the absolute amount of the segment's reported profit or loss and it should be 10% or more of the greater of the combined reported profit of all segment reporting profits. Next is the asset basis and the asset basis is the segment assets uh, should be 10% or more of the total assets of all operating segments. After determining the reportable segments, the entity should ensure that the total external revenue attributable to those reportable state segments is at least 75% of the total entity's, entity's total revenue. According to the calculations, using 10% threshold test, there are 4 reportable segments and 2 non-reportable segments. 4 reportable segments consist of plantation, which is 10.69%, 10, 10 Property 24.52%, automotive 19.22%, and trading 32.32%. The other left are two non reportable segments, which are credit financing, consists of 4.59%, and building materials, which are 8.65%, which not more than the 10%. Therefore, they are non reportable segments. After determining the reportable segments, the entity should ensure that the total external revenue attributable to those reportable segments is at least 75% of the entity's total revenue. By combining all the reportable segments, we can see by the calculation that it surpassed the 75% threshold which is 84.36%. Thus, the existence of reportable segments will remain reportable segments and there is no need to identify other additional reportable segments. This is the new segmented report where reportable segments, plantation, property, automotive and trading are being disclosed separately and then the non-reportable segments has been combined under operation. So, what are the benefits of having segmented reporting? First and foremost, it will create better decision making. Segment reporting will have chief operating decision making in Hub Seng Berhad to make decision in allocating the company resources. It because each segment shows its own profit and performance. Next, segmented reporting can analyze company performance. For instance, Hub Seng's segmented report shows one operating segments that contribute more to performance of the company. Last but not least, the investors will have a clear view for the future investment. Shareholders will be aware of the situation of companies since this segmental report showed the detail and perspective that they are being taken into consideration by making their decision. So, it will indicate their interest to make the new progress of the company. Then, we proceed to disadvantage of the segment report. The first one is misleading and difficulty to understanding about segment report by external users. Segment information is made through the eyes of the management and often make an arbitrary judgment to develop such 
segment data for internal management users. This nature and limitation of segment information make the external users have difficulty in understanding and not all the information useful for them in making investment decision. Next is the result of segment report presented to the external users could lead to competitive damage. This is when the confidential information could be revealed to external users such as profitable or unprofitable products, weaknesses of products that might induce the competitors to take the advantage of the weaknesses. The last one is lack of relevance of segment results due to the shorter period. The relevance of segment results become less precise leading to an accurate decision making estimate and judgment based on the segment report may not be accurate for decision regarding the company due to the shorter period. Next, we're moving on to the next part which is part B consists of interim report in Malaysian Financial Reporting Standards MFRS 134. There are several topics that we highlighted among of them which are basis of preparation to accounting policies that apply in our company, types of interim financial reports, the period for the current year, and comparative of each statements prepared by the company and the two adjustments needed made by the company. First and foremost is the basis of preparation. The basis of preparation can be classified into two categories which are integral method and discrete method under MFRS 134. The discrete method is used as the basis for preparing the interim report of company. Meanwhile, for the integral method, can be used to cap cost and financial statements in the same set of books. Hence, the financial statements of the group and of the company have been prepared in accordance with the Malaysian Financial Reporting Standards MFRS, International Financing Reporting Standards and the Companies Act 2016 in Malaysia. However, the financial statements of the group of the company has been prepared based on the historical cost basis, except as disclosed in the accounting policies below according to the basis preparation. Moreover, the financial statements must be presented in money currency of Malaysia, which is Ringgit Malaysia RM, and all values must be rounded to the nearest thousands. The second one is the accounting policies. It is the recognition to the accounting policies which apply in the interim financial statement. It have to be the same as applied in the annual financial statement. If there are changes in the accounting policies after the date of the most recent annual financial statement, then the new policies should be applied in the interim financial statement. The measurements for interim reporting purposes shall be made on a year-to-date basis. Hence, the effects of adopting new and amended Malaysian financial reporting standards. The accounting policies adopted are consistent with those of the previous financial year except for the changes arising from the adoption of the following MFRS and amendments that are mandatory for annual periods beginning on or after 1st January 2021. The accounting policies such as our amendments to MFRS 9 financial instruments, MFRS 139 financial instruments for recognition and measurement, MFRS 7 for financial instruments which is disclosures, MFRS 4 such as insurance contracts and MFRS 16 leases in which is interest rate benchmark reform. However, the adoption of the above amendments have no significant impact to the financial statements of the group and of the company. There are two types of interim reports. First of all, one is the complete set of financial statements as prescribed in the MFRS 101. Second is the condensed set of financial statements, which should include at a minimum of the following component. First is the condensed statement of financial position. Two, the condensed statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Third one is the condensed statement of changes in equity. Fourth is the condensed statement of cash flows and last but not least, fifth is the selected explanatory notes. Next, we continue to the period for the current and comparative of each statement prepared by the company. Hapsang accounting period will end on 31st December of each year. The current and comparative period prepared by the company according to MFRS 134 Interim Financial Reporting will be measured from 1st October 2021 to 31st December 2021 in which it corresponds to the fourth quarter of the company year 2021. For the statement of the, of the financial position at the end of current of interim report 
waiting period is 3 months from 1st October 2021 to 31st December 2021. And the comparative at the financial year and reporting period is 12 months from 1st January 2021 to 31st December 2020. For the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the current interim period of quarterly and debt from 1st October 2021 to 31st December 2021. The comparative for the current financial SOPL year reporting period is quarterly ended from 1st October 2020 to 31st December 31st December 2020. The comparative SOPL of current interim reporting period is 12 months ended from 1st January 2021 to 31st December 2021. Lastly, the comparative SOPL of immediate precedent financial year to debt reporting period is 12 months from 1st January 2020 to 31st December 2020. On the other hand, the period for the current and comparative of each statement prepared by the company will be continued with interim statement of changes in equity and statement of cash flow. The accounting period for Hub Samarhat will end on 31st December in every year. The current and cooperative period prepared by the company according to the MFRS 134 in which interim financial reporting will be ended from 1st January 2021 to 31st December 2021. For the statement of changes in equity at the end of current of interim reporting period will be ended in 12 months from 1st January 2021 to 31st December 2021. The comparative statement for the comparable year to the period of immediately preceding at the financial year end reporting period is 12 months ended from 1st January 2020 to 31st December 2020. Hence, for the statement of cash flow as at 31st December 2021, the current interim reporting period of 12 months will be ended from 1st January 2021 to 31st December 2021. Last but not least, the comparative statement for the comparable year to the period or of immediately preceding financial year to date, the reporting period will be ended in 12 months from 1st January 2020 to 31st December 2020. Next, we will move to the last part, which is the adjustment that been made by the company. So, the first one, as you can see, on 30 September 2021, there is a transfer from PPE to IP due to change of views from owner-occupied property, which is the PPE to rent it out, which is the IP, investment property. The fair value of the building which amounted to 1.5 million is deemed to be the cost of investment property. The difference between the fair value of 1.5 million and the carrying amount of 600,000 is 900,000 and it is to be treated as a surplus in asset revaluation reserve. A cumulative depreciation of 400,000 in the PPE is to be eliminated. For the second adjustment, which is on the 1st January of 2021, the carrying amount of the plan was 200,000. And on the 1st September of 2021, the first replacement of the major component take place. Since the replacement of the new component as the value of the company, it is to be capitalized as PPE, which is the property, plan and equipment, and it will be depreciated. The cost of accumulated depreciation of the old component is to be eliminated. So, at the end of September, the carrying amount of the plan is 220000 So, this is the extract of the statement of financial position. As you can see, the decrease in PPE because there is a disposal of the old component and have the changes to the new component as well as the transfer from PPE to IP. As for the investment property, the increasing amount because there is a transfer from PPE to IP, which is an investment property. So, that's all for the presentation of segmental and interim report for Hub Seng Consolidated Berhad for 2021. Thank you for listening until we meet again next time. Thank you and Assalamualaikum.